Okay, so returning to goal setting and pursuit, first you need to set your goal. You really should take the time required to define your priority. What are you going to try and learn? And then you're going to pick a goal that really feels challenging, that feels like it might even be out of reach because that will recruit the neural circuits associated with arousal. They're motivating enough to get you into action. Now, I want to be very clear. I'm not suggesting that you pick a goal that's impossible to achieve or that you believe is impossible to achieve. That's not going to serve you well. Rather, I'm saying pick a goal that feels just a bit out of reach and don't obsess too much about whether or not it's a lot out of reach or a little bit out of reach. Pick something you're excited to pursue that you would really like to accomplish, set that goal, and then just set aside all other goals. Still, of course, maintain or improve other aspects of your life that are necessary for daily living, for mental health, physical health, etc but really just focus on one goal. I promise that you will be far more satisfied with the results if you can truly set a priority. So once you've defined the specific goal that you are going to prioritize, there are two more things that you need to do before you start to pursue that goal. The first one is that you need to define the specific verbs, the actions that are involved in pursuing that goal. This is absolutely critical. A lot of people will set a sort of title goal or a goal state will say, oh, you know, I want to be rich or I want to be smart, or they will say, I want to be fit or proficient in a given language. It's really important that you put additional specificity on your goal. In fact, it's important that you put a lot of specificity on your goal and that you focus mainly on verbs when defining that specificity. Now, there are a lot of reasons for this that have to do both with increasing the probability that you will achieve your goal, as well as maintaining motivation as you pursue that goal. So for instance, rather than saying you want to be fit or you want to be a better runner or swimmer, you would want to get very specific about the verb that you're going to engage in in order to achieve that goal. Now, it's somewhat obvious in the case of running or swimming. I think everyone understands that if you want to be a better runner, there is going to be some running involved. If you want to be a better swimmer, there's going to be some swimming involved, of course. But presumably, there will be some other behaviors as well. Everything from driving to the pool or lacing up your shoes. I mean, there's an essentially near infinite number of verbs involved in any type of goal pursuit. So what we are talking about here is really defining the goal on a piece of paper. And I do think that's important. You should write this down. And I think the process of selecting your goal, that priority, as well as defining the specificity of the verb action that you're going to pursue should be done on paper. You, of course, are going to think, but then you should write it out. Seeing things on paper and writing them out by hand with pen or pencil really has been shown to engage neural circuitry in a way that is different than typing with your thumbs into your phone, which by the way is a new feature of human evolution. I do believe this is the first time in human evolution that we have uh, written with our thumbs. I don't know, I don't have a time machine, I can't go back and check, but I'm willing to place a bet that that statement is correct. So the point is that writing things out is not only important, it's also the most effective way to embed knowledge in our nervous system. And so I highly recommend that you write things out on a piece of paper in your process of goal setting. Now, in terms of tools or protocols to both initiate and to sustain effort during your goal pursuit process, we need to think about the specific time domain or the amount of time that we're trying to do that within. So for instance, there are tools that you can use to stay motivated within the one hour learning block that you happen to be doing on Monday morning, for instance. And there are other tools and protocols that you can incorporate towards staying motivated from one day to the next or from one week to the next. But I think the most useful of those tools are going to be the tools that you incorporate to stay motivated within a given training block or practice block toward your goal. Because what I just described a few minutes ago was the process of how to initiate your daily work. Right? You ask yourself that question, am I motivated? The answer could be yes, could be no. If you really wanna get you know, uh, quantitative about it, you could give yourself a one to 10 score, 10 being the most motivated. Frankly, I'm not that quantitative about that sort of thing. I'm more subjective about it, but I know some of you are real um, number junkies and you really like to quantify everything, keep a journal and look back, see how that relates to your sleep. You know, some people are of that orientation. Other people like myself are simply going to, you know, sit down and say, okay, it's time. It's time to train or it's time to practice, whatever the thing may be. How motivated am I? Am I, a, I don't know, like a six out of 10 or a seven out of 10? Okay, I'm ready to go. I'm going to visualize the end in mind in a positive way. Or if I'm a two out of 10 or anything less than a four out of 10, 
I'm thinking I'm not that motivated. So then I'm going to basically scare myself into doing the work that day. So that's how you initiate the work each day. And I just gave you a couple of quick examples of how you could quantify that. It took me about 30 seconds to do that example out loud. It'd take you about 30 seconds to do. But again, if you want to quantify it in more detail and write it down and relate it to other things, be my guest. And I do want to wish you all the best of luck in setting, pursuing, and achieving your goals. And last, but certainly not least, thank you for your interest in science.